Now, why is there craving? Or oh, what is the condition of craving? Sensation. Sensation, feeling. Now, pleasant feeling, unpleasant feeling, neutral feeling, right? So, when there is feeling, there is craving, ordinarily. Now, when you have a good, good feeling, then you are attached to it. So when you practice meditation and you, you feel good, then you, you don't want to lose this, right? <laughs> you, you, don't, you want to hold on to it. So when there is good feeling, there is attachment or craving, right? Then when there is unpleasant feeling, there is what? Hmm? So according to this, feeling to craving. So pleasant feeling to craving. Unpleasant feeling to <laughs> Now it is said in in the commentaries that when you have good feeling you want to hold on to it. When you have unpleasant feeling, you want a pleasant feeling. So there is craving even though you have bad feeling, unpleasant feeling. So you have unpleasant feeling, you long for pleasant feeling. So there is, <laughs> there is the, the, the craving. So uh, whether you, you have a good uh, pleasant feeling or unpleasant feeling, uh, there is bound to arise craving. And what about neutral feeling? Neutral feeling is similar to pleasant feeling. So when you have neutral feeling, you tend to attach to it too. So there, there is always a craving, I mean, I should not say always, <laughs> I will explain it later. So when there is a feeling, there is craving. So feeling is the condition for craving. Or feeling arises, I mean, con uh, craving arises having feeling as a condition. Does feeling always lead to craving? Hmm? Does cr uh, feeling always lead to craving? Yes. Yes or no? Yes. 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 No. <laughs> no. <laughs> one says one says yes. One says no. <laughs> so you 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 will have to fight. <laughs> I think it's yes. Yes. No. Yes. 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 I don't know. No, those who say yes, I want to ask, do you practice meditation? <laughs> I was going to say, for those who, I think before enlightenment, feeling always, they'll leave the craving. No. With meditation, you can avoid craving, whatever feeling you have. Say, you have pain here. And then you watch pain and say pain, pain, pain. And you, 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 you are mindful of pain. And so you avoid say, having attachment or having aversion towards pain. You can avoid this by mindfulness. And you have good feeling and that is why when you have good feeling, pleasant feeling, you have to be mindful of it. Because if you, if you are not mindful of it, you tend to attach to it. So. With practice of vipassana meditation, you can <coughs> avoid having craving, although there is feeling. But it's only temporary, right? Only during the time you meditate. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Next, next backward step. What is the condition of feeling? Contact. So when there is contact, there is feeling. When there is no contact, there will, there will not be feeling. But it is always uh, when there is contact, there is feeling. There is no, no interfering with it. Now, what is contact? Contact is a separate mental factor. Now, we must understand this because many people misunderstand contact. Contact does not mean just coming together or 
to two or three things. But uh, as a result of coming together of two or three things, something arises. And that something is what we call contact. Although contact is conditioned by the, the other, other things, it arises simultaneously. It is something like, say, when you strike two sticks together, or say, when you clap your hands, the sound arises, right? The sound is conditioned by the coming together of two hands. But the sound arises simultaneously with the hands coming together. So that sound is, uh, uh, contact is like that sound. Now, not just these, uh, these, these two coming together, but because of coming together of two things or three things, there arises one mental factor, and that mental factor is called contact. Now, the contact should, uh, can be understood with reference to um, seeing something walking on a tightrope. So when people, some, some, somebody is walking on a tightrope, uh, what do you feel? How do you feel? You have something feeling here. Say, uh, you, you, you are worried of, of, for, for that person, uh, he, he, might, he might fall or something like that. So that kind of feeling is caused by the mental contact uh, with what, what the man is doing on the, on the tight rope. So that, is, that feeling is the, the conditioned by the contact. Or, say, when you see something, uh, someone eating uh, say, sour thing, then you have water in your mouth. And that, that is also conditioned by, by contact. So, uh, contact here means mental contact. So when things come together, because of their coming together, the contact arises. And when there is contact, there is that feeling. Feeling, uh, pleasant feeling or unpleasant feeling or neutral feeling. What is the condition of contact? Six sense bases. Actually, we can say twelve sense bases. When we see something, there is contact. And what causes contact? What is uh, what conditions contact? Or why is there contact? Because there is the eye, and because there is something to see. So when uh, a visible object comes into the avenue of the eye. That means they come, something like coming together. Then there is the seeing consciousness. So when we see something, there are three things, right? The eye, the visible object, and consciousness, seeing consciousness. So when these three come together, there is contact. So contact is conditioned by actually three things, but here only the physical uh, base is taken as the condition for, for contact. So there are how many bases? Six. Eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, and mind. So in Buddhism, so there are six senses, not five senses, and mind is called the sixth sense. So these are called um, sense bases. Because there is the eye, there is the eye contact. Because there is the ear, there is the ear contact and so on. So contact is conditioned by the sense bases. Now, what are the condi conditions of six bases? Nama and Rupa, right? Nama, Rupa and Nama, Rupa. Now here, nama means mental factors, chetas egas, and rupa means the material properties. Because there are chetas egas and uh, there are uh, material properties, there are actually not six, twelve sense bases. Now, the eye base 
belongs to material property, right? Uh, ear, base, and so on. Then uh, the sixth one, what? Mind. Mind base belongs to. Uh, mind base means it chaitas. So the the sixth base, um, which is which is mind, is conditioned by what? Chaitasika. That means the the mental factors and consciousness arise together, and they support each other. So they condition each other. Mind conditions mental factors, and mental mental factors condition mind. So they are conditioned uh, conditioned by each other. That is why the conditions for six sense bases are said to be nama. I mean man, uh, mental factors and the other man, material properties rupa. And what is the condition for nama and rupa? Vijnana, right? Consciousness, right? Now, consciousness and mental factors, they are two components of mind. Consciousness is uh, the awareness of, the, of an object, just the awareness, not, not the awareness we use in meditation. In meditation, what we call awareness is sati, or mindfulness. But here, just the awareness, just, just the uh, relationship between the, mm, the mind, I mean, chitta on the one hand and the objects on the other. So just the awareness of the object is called consciousness. And when, only when there is the awareness of the object can there be the contact with the object or, say, attachment to the object or aversion to the object. So mental factors are said to be dependent upon consciousness, which is just the awareness of the object. Without the awareness of the object, mental factors cannot arise. But consciousness and mental factors arise simultaneously. Although they arise together, mental factors cannot arise if there is no consciousness, if there is no awareness of the object. So awareness of the object, which is here uh, consciousness, is condition for Nama and Rupa. And there is what is called, um, say, rebirth producing consciousness. So as a result of rebirth producing consciousness, there arises rebirth. Now, rebirth means a type of consciousness and material properties caused by, actually caused by karma. Here, karma and mm, consciousness are taken together. So, the, the material properties, some material properties are said to be conditioned by uh, consciousness. And there are types of material properties which are caused by mind, so mind-born material properties. So that is why vijnana or consciousness is a condition for uh, nama and rupa, that means chetasikas and, and uh, material properties. Now what is the condition of a uh, cause of vijnana? Consciousness. What is the condition of consciousness? Mental formations, right? Now here consciousness means resultant consciousness. Say we see something and that seeing consciousness is a resultant consciousness. Say we hear something and that hearing consciousness is a resultant consciousness. And also when we, when we took rebirth in, in this life, the first, the first type of consciousness is the result in consciousness. It is the result of past karma. So, consciousness both at the moment of rebirth and also during life, some type of consciousness we call the result in consciousness. 
are caused by mental formation. Now, what are mental formations? Do you know what, what mental formations are? <coughs> kusala and akusala karma. <laughs> the same as bhava. So, mental formations means wholesome karma and unwholesome karma. So, wholesome karma or unwholesome karma produces result and consciousness at the moment of rebirth as well as uh, during life. Now, what, what is the condition of mental formation? Ignorance. <laughs> then, <laughs> mental formation means uh, wholesome karma and unwholesome karma, right? So, when you practice meditation, so you are you are acquiring wholesome karma, and that wholesome wholesome karma is conditioned by ignorance. So because you are ignorant, you practice meditation, <laughs> right? <laughs> now ignorance means ignorance uh, truth, ignorance of uh, what really is. Now, when we come across some something, some object. We do not see them as uh, we do not see it as it really is. We take it to be permanent. We take it to be desirable, and so uh, taking them as permanent, taking them as, as desirable, is actually caused by ignorance. Because we are ignorant of the true nature, we are attached to it, or we are uh, repulsed by 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 the object. So, when through uh, vipassana meditation we see the true nature, then we dispel ignorance. So, when there is no ignorance, there can be no uh, mental formation. So, now we have gone backward from number 11, uh, old aging, aging and death, to ignorance. Now, is ignorance the first cause, or is there no condition for ignorance? It looks like it, right? Yeah. Because <laughs> ignorance is given at the top of, uh, at the beginning uh, of uh, this doctrine. So it looks like there is no condition for ignorance. Then we, 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 we could take ignorance as the first cause, right? Now, it's said that ignorance has its condition too. Say, when we are oppressed by aging and death, then uh, there arises in our mind what what are called uh, asavas, cankers. And among the cankers, there is ignorance. So, uh, ignorance is also conditioned by the other um, other unwholesome mental mental states. So. That is why this uh, doctrine is to be understood as a wheel, not not as just just a chain, but as a wheel. Mm-hmm. It's turning round and round. So from one to you go to two, three, four, five, eleven, and then back to one. So this is a wheel of life, and so long as we are unable to to interfere with this wheel, unable to cut this wheel, we will be going round and round and round from one life to another and we have we have come how many how many births we don't know maybe <laughs> millions of births and we will go for for many m- more millions if we do not cut uh, this wheel now where can we cut this wheel huh? anywhere anywhere <laughs> <laughs> Craving. Yes. Craving, yeah. So only at one place, right? Mm. Uh, can we can we cut this wheel? And that is where uh, between feeling and craving, right? So that is very important. Now, when we practice meditation and we pass on our meditation, we are cutting this wheel. So when there is, uh, although there is feeling, if we do not have craving, then. The, the, the wheel is no more, right? So uh, every moment we are 
meditating and being mindful of feelings, say good or bad or whatever, then we are cutting this 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 wheel of life. Maybe this is temporary cutting off. <laughs> this temporary cutting will lead lead us to the permanent cutting when we when we get enlightenment and become arahants. So this is the only place that we can cut uh, this wheel of life. And what what vipassana meditators do is just cutting or trying to cut this wheel at this point. So this point is the most important for the practitioners of vipassana meditation. Before I do the sum- summary, could you explain again why the uh, aging and death cause ignorance? Oh. Again? No. Oh. Well, so when we are oppressed by aging and death, we suffer, right? When we suffer, there arises in our mind and the cankers, okay. the mental defilement. So when the when we say the cankers arise or the cankers uh, multiply, we mean there is ignorance because ignorance is one of the cankers. So when when uh, there is aging and death, and we suffer this aging and death, then in our minds, the ignorance arises. Not only ignorance, the, the, the other mental defilements also arises, uh, arise. And therefore, uh, ignorance is said to be conditioned by aging and death and the other cankers. So how many factors did you find in but uh, dependent origination. How many? Ignorance, mental formation, consciousness, uh, nama rupa, uh, sense basis, contact, feeling, craving, grasping. Uh, Bawa. Becoming. Bawa. Uh, yes, be- becoming, birth, birth, and aging and death. Mm-hmm. Aging and death is one. So how many? Twelve. 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 Yeah. So there are said said to be twelve factors in this the doctrine of dependent origination or in this wheel of life. So among these twelve factors, those that are mm-hmm. responsible for this field to go on and on and on are the number one, uh, the ignorance, and uh, number eight, um, craving. So these two are the most important uh, conditions or causes for this field to go on and on and on, the ignorance and craving. And according to Abhidhamma, craving is always accompanied by ignorance. So when we say craving, we also mean ignorance, because ignorance and craving cannot cannot be separated. That is why when we say craving is the second noble truth, right? The second noble truth is craving, or the origin of suffering is craving. So when we say this, we, we mean also ignorance, not only craving, because Craving cannot stand alone. Wherever there is craving, there is ignorance. It is always accompanied by ignorance. So, uh, uh, with regard to the second noble truth, the Buddha said that the, the, the craving is the, the origin of suffering. That is just uh, taking one which is, uh, which is uh, prominent. But actually, we, we should take both, the ignorance and craving. So these two are called the roots of roots of the, the round of existence. So if we can cut these two roots, then the round of existence will be no more and we will uh, die as arahant <laughs> and uh, there's a final liberation from all suffering. So these are the two roots of existence, uh, ignorance and craving. Those who have become arahants were able to destroy these two roots. That is why they 
even before they die, whatever they do, they just do it. They, uh, their actions do not constitute karma. So uh, Buddhas preach, uh, teach, uh, Buddhas, uh, teach people, right? And Arahants also uh, teach other people, and they may they may donate something to some, some other person. And whatever they do, their action does not become kusala. <laughs> so it is called kiriya, just doing. Because because if if it is kusala, then it must have result. And when there are results, then it will go on and on and on. So, because um, the Arahants have cut off two, two roots of uh, round of existence, they do not acquire fresh karma. Although they do what to our, to our eyes is meritorious deed. But theirs is not called merit or not called kusala. So uh, theirs is called kiriya. Kiriya is translated as inoperative or functional. That means just doing. Following the line of thought taken by Bodhisattva, we trace backward to the first. I mean, to the first mentioned in this uh, in this uh, teaching, the, the ignorance. But actually, when the Bodhisattva uh, went back. His his wisdom or his mind stopped at number three, and then turned back. He didn't he didn't go over to second sankhara and avijja ignorance. So he he stopped there and then hit, his mind turned back. And it is explained in the commentaries that because he was going to practice vipassana. Uh, on these factors, he, he contemplated only on those belonging to present, present life, and not go back to past life. So, uh, when uh, if you read the first, first discourse of the second part of uh, Diga Nigaya, the long discourses, so you will find that the Bodhisattva said, "Oh, my, my, my mind mm, turns back from." Vijnana mm, Pachya, I mean, number three, Vijnana Pachya, Nama Rupa. He said, uh, Vijnana is the condition for Nama and Rupa, and Nama Rupa is condition for Vijnana, like that. 